Welcome to this tutorial of fleet design uh, for Hearts of Iron when playing Man the Guns. The Navy aspect of the game was changed drastically uh, with the release of Man the Guns last week. As such, I think it's useful to uh, revisit the Navy uh, compositions you may make. So, when you are designing your Navy, I think you should take a few uh, specific steps and um, see what works best for you your and your country. You should first look at which ship is actually best at what task. Some ships are just naturally better at being a screen or at dishing out a lot of damage. Um, then there's the aspect of how are you actually going to defeat your enemies. Do you at the center of your fleet put a super heavy battleship and you just want to blast your enemies to smithereens or are you going to build like a lean carrier task force? Um, and who are you actually going to fight? Um, are you going to fight like a modern force with a lot of carriers or are you going to fight more of a legacy force such as the Italians with a lot of old um, old uh, regular uh, destroyers and battleships? And then is obviously the aspect of where are you going to fight. Are you going to fight in the middle of the Pacific or somewhere nicely tucked away in your own archipelago? Uh, it's all key to what composition that works best for your country. And then you may actually have some uh, limitations in terms of the amount of dockyards you have or the amount of oil you can uh, import and, uh, and other resources. Not every country can make brilliant battleships and destroyers tailor made for every type of situation um, and after you've done all that you uh, should align your doctrine and start researching down that tree and uh, build your ships <laughs> now in order to find the best role for each ship I've gone ahead and uh, created a bunch of templates and for and those templates are all like very uh, specialized in a certain task and as such I can find which ship is the cheapest uh, to perform a certain task. Now note that this is all 1940 stats so 1940 research all the 1940 researches are done and um, that has helped me to create uh, a few tables for you on getting specific stats. The first one we begin with is light attack it's pretty obvious that, that uh, destroyers and cruisers, both heavy and light, are the best at dishing out light attack. Uh, they're here sitting at the top. They are definitely the best at getting rid of enemy screens. Now, do note that destroyers, they actually lack the piercing to penetrate any cruiser which has a bit of armor. Uh, so they, they are not very consistent at uh, uh, getting rid of enemy screens. Uh, whereas 1940 cruisers, which we're looking at, uh, can penetrate up to cruiser armor 3, which is actually... Um, so they can't penetrate cruisers of their own, uh, with, with armor of their own time. Still, they do a very good job at getting rid of any other lights. <laughs> so when going for light attack, uh, it may actually be good to go for uh, a minimum of 26 light attack. Uh, because a lot of destroyers have 50 HP and uh, light cruisers have um, a maximum of 154 HP. So multiples of 26 light attack do seem optimal. Now considering heavy attack, um, you can actually choose uh, battleships, battle cruisers, um, heavy cruisers or super heavy battleships. They all uh, do a pretty similar job at dishing out heavy attack, uh, but do note that heavy cruisers they simply lack the piercing to <laughs> penetrate even an early battle cruiser. Um, so they will, their damage is definitely mitigated uh, by quite a bit, making them probably the least efficient option. When looking at HP, uh, there are two templates which definitely stand out. It's a heavy cruiser with a lot of the medium guns which add HP. Uh, on, as modules and it basically gives you a very beefy unit uh, which can survive a lot of torment but it's very slow though so it may also not be best to retreat 
Uh, but I think overall, when adding HP to your uh, navy, the best bet is um, a destroyer with basically only a torpedo. So one torpedo slot filled, and all modules just basically not not filled at all. And it just gives you so much, so many ships, and uh, uh, you know so many targets uh, for your enemy. And that while well, they still actually fire a bunch of torpedoes. Um, so I think they are the basically your best mass meat screen. <laughs> Note that the support battleship actually performs very well uh, and is very good to add HP to your uh, battle line uh, region as well. Now in terms of AA, there's definitely one winner. Um, if you fill a uh, destroyer with AA slots, it basically is the cheapest way to get a lot of AA in your navy. Uh, but there's a caveat there that if you m run into any force that has uh, a lot of power to destroy your light ships um, they may get torn apart and then you uh, are left undefended so you m you know may want to think twice before you only use uh, destroyers for AA and I think there's a the <laughs> there's a dev diary comment which basically uh, should sum up the way you should um, you know uh, divide AA over your fleet is that uh, when firing back in an enemy plane, a, sim a single ship um, will also get a part of the whole fleet's AA armament uh, to help it out. So you may want to spread out AA over your, you know, support ships and even battleships if you're using them. Um, so I think you should definitely uh, adhere to that. Note here that the battleship looks very bad. Uh, in terms of uh, cost per AA, um, you know the battleship itself is very expensive, <laughs> so it's never going to be a really effective unit at adding a, a only AA. But it can do a lot less, uh, a lot of other stuff. I mean, <laughs> um, looking at deck size, uh, there's three ways to make a carrier. You can make a regular uh, carrier hull, or you can make converted battleships or converted uh, cruisers. Basically, looking at deck size, the best one uh, is the regular carrier uh, with just four deck slots filled. Um, now, it's a pretty expensive unit, I'll give you that, uh, but it's still the most economic. <laughs> if that sounds logical to you. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually correct, but all the converted carriers, um, as well as the, the regular carrier hull, uh, have equal fuel usage. And um, that that's not really what you want if you're a small nation and you want to convert like one <laughs> of your cruisers to be a carrier uh, and you don't really want to get have that massive fuel you should um, limiting you so I'm not sure if this is uh, intended or um, actually a bit of a bug uh, but that in, in my case I'm just gonna make regular carriers and if I find the cost too high I'll just put um, a deck less on it I think that makes sense right now in order to show you how you can use the information I provided, I've created two example fleets. Uh, one is a fast carrier task force and the other one is a shallow sea uh, force which I assume has a bit of air support. Now the fast carrier force basically consists of a carrier and it only fills the battle line. I do hope you already know how the combat system works, basically you have a carrier region, you have a battle line region and a screen region. Uh, whereas a battle line can actually dish out damage to both screens and to the other battle line uh, but not directly to the carrier force if they are shielded by the enemy's battle line. Um, an advantage of this setup of only using the battle line, so meaning capitals, um, is that any other screens will basically uh, not really have targets. They, they don't have anything to which they can penetrate and they'll just be shooting at the battle line. Um, and the, the scary thing of that is obviously enemy torpedo ships and enemy subs and for that I've added a specific carrier uh, which has a lot of anti-sub capabilities and a bunch of light attack. I'll show that later on, that's why it's marked in yellow. Now the shallow sea uh, fleet has at the center a super heavy battleship which can basically blow any other ship out of the water and um, in order to do that it needs some 
help. It needs some. Uh, it needs a heavy cruiser, which will just slay a lot of all the other screens the enemy may have, which are obviously a pain for the super heavy battleship to target. And then I've added a bunch of screens, uh, which will protect this this main force. Uh, that's cheap uh, destroyers with the torpedo and a bit of anti-air capability and uh, minesweeper destroyers uh, because mines may be used a lot more in the shallow sea I'll show these two templates in the game so this is the design I talked about earlier it's the cheap destroyer uh, which is basically your screen it's got one torpedo slot filled and it doesn't do much else but it's dirt cheap now I do think it's worthwhile to add some anti-air to it not too much um, because you don't want to make the design too expensive you just want to churn out as many as possible um, so one or two uh, anti-air is definitely enough uh, and you just want to churn out a load a load a load of these and they are great screens for a lot of situations um, the only thing they lack is obviously range um, and they are bad in the deep oceans but you know you just there to get hit, right? <laughs> so the other design I wanted to show is the uh, heavy cruiser, which is still fast, which you can use in the carrier task force, and it's got some anti-sub capabilities. Um, it's got some light and anti-air um, capabilities. It obviously has to boast the uh, the heavy attack gun, which is still all right, uh, you know, for other heavy cruisers especially. Furthermore, it's got some um, it's got, it's got some uh, some anti-air, but I don't want to reduce the speed too much because it needs to keep up with the carrier task force. Um, it still it can still carry its armor though. Um, I definitely like this unit. I think it should work well in a lot of situations actually. Um, yeah, still pretty cool. So I hope this gives you an idea of what you can do with your fleets, uh, how you can design your your navies. Um, I'll be working on uh, some pretty cool stuff where I'm gonna simulate um, a lot of fleets fighting against each other um, and uh, I'll be posting some videos on that uh, at some time point in the future <laughs> follow this channel if you liked it and uh, see you around next time